Welcome to Christ the King Church, Shelby, North Carolina. Let's enter into a prayer moment. Because he lives, we can face tomorrow. No fear. Amen. Amen. No fear. No fear. Praise God. Uh, thank you, Lord. As we sing, our mind comes into alignment now with you and your word and the spirit of the Lord. We pray tonight for those who are sick. We pray for Sam. We pray for Jerry Pearson. We pray for others that are away. We pray for Cindy in Honduras. Let the Spirit of the Lord be strong upon her. Let the words that she speak bring forth life to those who hear. Releasing the anointing in her hands as she touches people in praise for them. We thank you for our men's meeting we had last evening for the wonderful meal, Lord, and the fellowship in the Word. We thank you, Lord, for our chaplains that you have set aside here to help pray the prayer of faith for people. Lord, I need your help tonight. And what I think you've given me, and I know these are not the kind of teachings you just hear, but you hear and hear and hear, and then faith comes. In Jesus' name, amen. Last night we talked a little bit about miracles. And I'd like to tell you that there are miracles taking place in people's lives all around here every day and every week. Can you say amen? amen. And I'd like to just, someone mentioned last evening, just take a service and just set it aside and let the people that have received miracles just stand and begin to testify about the miracle they've received and how God has changed their life. All miracles are not spectacular. Some of them are very silent. Some of them are very subtle. But when God moves in your life, it's a miracle. Can you say amen? So this evening, I'm going to ask you to open your Bibles with me. We're going to begin in Romans chapter 8. Uh, we're going to talk some more about this, what I call the school of miracles. You say, why do you talk about miracles, Pastor? Because there's a revival of miracles in the land now. And that revival is going to accelerate in the days that we're coming into. More and more people are going to begin to look to God for the answer to their physical needs, spiritual needs, and emotional needs. And any time we begin to lift up our eyes and look unto God, something happens. Can you say amen? Uh, Romans chapter 8 is a place I've been for several weeks. I just meditate this chapter. and it's, I'm just going to use it as a launching pad because as I read this chapter, I recognize the fact that there are no limits on miracles. Can you say amen? We don't have a limit to them. There are no limits on miracles. Yet most live as though they're not entitled to a miracle. man told me three days ago, he said, I just never felt like I'm worthy of a miracle. Well, why not? <laughs> what do you think you'd have to do to get worthy of a miracle? Like the guy who told me, well, you know, I'm not good enough to go to heaven. I asked him, I said, well, how good do you think you have to be to go to heaven? And uh, we need to open up our eyes and recognize the fact that God is a miracle-working God. He's supernatural. How can you believe in God and not really believe in miracles? Mm, it's an awesome thing, isn't it? Uh, a lot of people act like miracles are performed by and happen to other people, but not them. You'd be amazed how many people say, I I've never had a miracle. Well, look in a mirror, you probably look at one. How did you get here? 
<laughs> you were a miracle yourself. God brought you here by a miracle. You weren't just an accident. Can you say amen? amen? Romans chapter 8 verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. In the Greek text, the period is here. If you have a modern translation, the sentence ends here. The, what you're about to read in the other part of this particular verse was added by the translators or came about in different manuscripts. Now, let me read it to you. There is therefore now no condemnation to those which are in Christ Jesus, period. The translators here said, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. They had to add this because they couldn't handle the first part of that verse. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Verse 2 said, The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh for said that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh you get around these people they only want to talk about natural things but notice, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit, these are people who want to talk about God things. Next verse. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. That, to me, is my calling. I want to help you, by the help of the Lord, to become spiritual Minded. Would you say spiritual minded? When a person becomes spiritual minded, they are, their mindset is for a miracle. To be spiritually minded is life, and also the Bible calls it peace. Say peace. Life and peace. When people are spiritually minded, how do you become that? Well, just right now. You're in the process of becoming that now. As you sit, bring your Bible, follow me in the scriptures, and listen. A spiritual-minded person is a miracle mindset. That person will have no problems when you talk to him about miracles. When you talk about prayer, he said, yeah, I pray, I want to get in on that. When you talk about studying the word of the Lord, he's in on that. You see, it's a lifestyle for him. It's just not something he does on Wednesdays and Sundays. It's a lifestyle for him. He's spiritual minded. Paul talked, he's a spiritual person. Paul talked about the natural man. He talked about the spiritual man. The spiritual man believes things. Can you say amen? And in this verse, it says there's no condemnation. Uh, there's no sin consciousness. Man, we dealt on these things for a while. We talked about the gift of no condemnation. The gift of no sin consciousness. Uh, that means your blessed consciousness. Say blessed. blessed. This Lord's Day. I'm going to talk about what really is a blessed man. What is a blessed man? I'll tell you who he's blessed. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute sins. Blessed is the man who knows his sins have been forgiven. Blessed is the man who knows there's no condemnation in his life. Blessed is the man that's spiritual minded. He's moved away from that carnal mind and carnal thinking because it only produces death. People are dying all around us today because of their thinking. Carnal thinking. It's death. There's no life. There's no victory there. And you can sing about it and preach about it for 30 days. But until something happens here in the mind, until it becomes, the Bible calls it, renewed and becomes a different mindset, then they will remain thinking carnal stuff, thinking natural things, worried about this, worried about that, concerned about how they're going to make their ends meet, concerned about every little symptom that comes upon their body. I wonder what this is. This is mindset that we need. Spiritual-minded people 
Listen, life, say life. Peace and joy. I call it kingdom consciousness. It's hard for a carnal believer to understand that he is in the kingdom of God. I have been delivered from the kingdom of darkness, and I have been translated over into the kingdom of God's dear son. I am in a kingdom that is ruled by God. Blessed be the Lord. And do you know that the kingdom of God is not eat and drink? The kingdom of God, according to Paul, writing in Romans, it's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness, peace, and joy. That's the things we enjoy over in the kingdom of God. You say, where is the kingdom? Jesus says it's within you. Isn't that an awesome thought? I am in the kingdom of God. That means that I, I'm kingdom conscious. I'm not sin conscious because my sins have been paid for. They weren't just paid for, they have been punished in the body of Jesus Christ. My sins have been punished in the body of Jesus Christ. That's why I'm pardoned and I'm purified. Not because of my works, but because of what Jesus has done for me. Can you say amen? So I have a blessed consciousness, not a cursed consciousness. In the kingdom, there's where healing resides. And what we do, if we can get people out of that carnal thinking, and I'm not saying it's easy, and get them over into this spiritual thinking, get them over into kingdom thinking, become spiritual minded. It's amazing what begins to happen in your body and in your mind, your physical being, as you begin to move into that kind of thinking. It's awesome. I said it's awesome. Can you say amen? Uh, we're going to Proverbs chapter 4. John 8, 32, we dealt with this weeks back. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. We were singing tonight about being free, and I just wanted to stand up and say, free from what? T.D. Jake says every few weeks they have to have get free services. How many times do you have to get free? And he'll have people run all over the church, praise God, I'm free. And they have another get free service next week or next month. The same people come back trying to get free again. How many times do you get free? Listen, let me just settle it with you right now. Singing won't set you free. Amen. Preaching won't set you free. Amen. Truth is what sets you free. The truth you know that will set you free. There's no sickness. There's no disease. There's no conflict that you'll ever face that the truth of God won't heal in your life. Missed a good place to say amen. amen. Truth will set you free when you become aware of that truth. When you know that truth, begin to acknowledge that truth. Can you see amen? Proverbs chapter 4. I want to go there, please. And I want to show you this person I would call the great physician. Proverbs chapter 4. I hope you have your Bibles. Dear God, people nowadays, you know, they don't use Bibles, they use this. Uh, and I guess that's okay. It has to be. I can't do anything about that. Chapter 4, verse 22 says this. They, well, verse 20. My son, attend to my words. I'd like a show of hands, but I'm not going to ask you. I wonder how many is really doing that in this place. You want to see some miracles? You need to start attending to his words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For their life, would you say life please? What's, what, what, what would the Bible call life? The words. Words, their life. Jesus said the words that I speak unto you. Their spirit and their life. He says here, there are life unto those that find them, and health to all of their flesh. The word health is medicine. There are people who are healed just reading the Word of God. There are people who are healed just by seeing truth, acknowledging truth, and receiving truth. Amen. 
By the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. By the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. The word, this word, the word health is the word for medicine. Praise God, the word is the medicine. It's coming from the great physician, this wonderful medicine. And what it does, it makes us spiritual mind. And if you ever try, <laughs> have you ever tried to talk spiritual things with a carnal person? Dear Lord, forget it. And they'll say, huh? Say what? They look at you and they can't understand it. To be spiritual minded is life and peace. And when God gave me that job, I said, Lord, I hope you know what you're doing. Because I really need your help to be spiritually minded myself and to help your people to be spiritual minded. So it's not about me, it's about him and it's about this kind of thinking. When you're carnal minded, that's death. There's nothing good operating in you. The life of God does not have the foreplay in your life that it really wants to have. So that's why we need to meditate the word of the Lord. It is spiritual truths that heal us. I was talking to a lady the other day. She'd been on kidney medication for five years. No one laid hands on her. She just started reading the scriptures. She started reading the miracles of Jesus. And she determined Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That he's the God that never changes. And she said, you know, I'm sure Jesus ran across people who had kidney problems. But you know, he never prescribed any medication. I said, well. She said, that's five years ago. I'm free. I don't have kidney problems. I never take kidney medication. Because the word of God, reading the word truth came in me and I was healed. Amen. We're running all over the world. I'm, I hate to tell you, Oral's gone. You won't get those little big hands laid on you. He's gone. You can't find Benny. He's too quick. He's here today. But I tell you who you can find. This word if you throw that blame phone down and get you a word and get in this word and start meditating and underlining words and just meditate, just begin to acknowledge that I am the healer of the Lord. Jesus is a healer. I'm going to give attention to what I'm reading here. I'm going to hide these things in my heart because I believe the life of God is coming into me as I read these words. And I believe that I am taking medication from God that's going to all of my flesh. And I'm going to be healed. Amen. Glory be to God. Does it bother you that Jesus never practiced medicine as far as we know medicine? Does it bother you that he never prescribed medicine? Everything he did was just by the Spirit and it was supernatural. Are you against that stuff? Oh, no, I'm not against it. Some of us would probably be already in heaven were it not for it. But I'm going to tell you, don't think, bless God, you're going to have to stay on it all your life. As you begin to meditate the word of the Lord, more of the word comes in you. The more of God's life comes into you, more of God's medicine gets inside of you, you'll begin to lose the desire for some of these other things, and they'll begin to just fall away from you. And one day you'll just get up, bless God, and you decide, well, glory to God, I don't think I need that stuff in him. And you're free of it. You're healed. This is what salvation is all about. Amen. Dear Lord, dear Lord, sometimes I wonder, really. Uh, Paul said in Romans chapter 12, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Amen. Then you can prove what the will of God is all about. Renewing of your mind, to me, is becoming spiritual minded. Carnal minded, that's death. Spiritual minded is not only life, but it's life 
and peace and healing. Praise God. Can you say amen? So I believe there's a direct connection between our thoughts and our experiences. Jim, last evening in our men's meeting, talked about the children of Israel and the spies being sent out. They're going into a land that God's already said, I'm giving you this land, it's yours. But two of them came back with a good report. Ten of them come back. Uh, huh? Evil report. I asked Jim tonight, I said, that, that stirred me last night. Why would God call it an evil report? You can study that in Numbers 13, 14. Why would he call it an evil report? Because, listen, the report they gave did not line up with the will of God. Amen. God said, the land's yours, I'm going to give it to you. Didn't mean this. They just walk in. They got to fight for it. They, got, they can take it. But God said, I'm giving it to you. You listening to me? But they said, no, no, no. They're, <laughs> whoo, they're giants over there. We're grasshoppers in their sight. We can't, we can't do that. But the other two, Joshua and Caleb said, oh, we're more than able. We can do it. And those were the only two that lived to possess the land. The rest of them died out. So you understand, when I tell you that it is the will of the Lord for you to be healed, supernaturally by the power of God, that by the stripes of Jesus you're healed, and you begin to look in other directions, and you don't come in agreement with what God has said in your word, that's an evil report, God says. And if it's evil, that means it did not come from God because God is not evil. And evil is a lie. Amen. I wish somebody could hear what I was saying. What we think affects our health. What we think affects our, our happiness. And I think there's a direct connection between what we think and what we experience in this life. Hallelujah. He's a can-do God. Can you say amen? When we, when we transform our thinking, we are renewing the mind. Because our mind is set in a certain direction. Because of what we've been taught our lives. You understand? Most things that we believe we believe because some man told us. That's the thinking. It's a mindset that we have. The Bible calls it carnal thinking. Let me give this to you real quickly. Your body will follow spirit. I'll just pause there a moment. Your body will follow spirit. Your body is always in agreement. Your body is wanting to come in alignment. If your spirit goes in this direction, your body has to follow. No choice. There's no option. Because your body is not real smart by itself. Your body always follows spirit. If we can get people spiritually minded, their body is going to come in alignment. You understand? Your body is going to come in agreement, and your body is going to follow what your spirit says and knows and believes. The body, if you're not careful, will form a habit of running after a lie. When you get to heaven, if Eve is there, ask her. You've got to watch your body. It's going to follow something. It'll either follow truth or it'll follow a lie. Once it begins to follow this lie, that means it's evil. Your body is following something evil. It's not God. It's not good. It's evil. It's not truth. It's a lie. There's no truth in evil. 
Do you hear what I'm saying? There, and this is kind of, you need to get to take, meditate some of the stuff I'm about to put. There is no truth in evil. It's a lie. But you have to watch your body because your body will follow hard after that lie. Matter of fact, you will run after a lie as long as you believe it. That's why I'm asking, whose report are you going to believe? Have you ever went to a doctor and got a good report? You must have a good doctor if you do. They're not called, they don't make money by giving good reports. Your body will follow either truth or a lie. Your body does not know the difference between truth and a lie. Don't look at me like that. Your spirit does, but your body doesn't. When the devil said to Eve, hey, 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 you can't trust God. You can eat that fruit, you won't die. That's not what God said. That's a lie. That was an evil report. It was a lie. She followed that lie until it brought death in her own life. To be carnal minded is death. To be carnal minded is to follow the lies. Carnal minded people don't follow the truth. They follow a lie. And they'll follow that lie as long as they believe it. These lies just don't go away. What do you do, pastor? Bless God, you stop. You fight. You resist. You say no. I refuse to follow this lie one more minute. Lies do not set you free. Lies will bring you into bondage or either keep you in bondage. Can I get an amen in this place tonight for you? The truth of God is the only thing that will set you free. But your body doesn't know truth from a lie. Your body is always following something or someone. Always, always. Your body has to have something or someone to follow. And any time you give attention to a lie and begin to follow it, you're actually following a power that's opposed to God. Totally opposed to God. Opposed to truth. Can you overcome it? Oh, yes. Yes. People are always talking about devil's death. The devil can't make you do anything. He's defeated. The only thing he can do is lie. And all you got to do is say, fish not biting today. And you're okay. You go to a physician, he's going to tell you, you've got this problem, you've got this problem, you've got this problem. It might be a diagnosis coming from the natural. But let me ask you, whose report are you going to believe? You are a spirit being. Quit looking to the natural to try to get your spirit straightened out. Or quit looking to the natural to try to get your body straightened out. Your body can be made straight by the spirit of God that is within your spirit when you follow truth. When you follow truth, the lies will just fall off your back. You're just not open to those things. They just come and they hit, but they have no effect upon you. You just keep going on with the Lord. You keep going on with the Lord. You don't listen to the evil reports. You don't listen. If you do, it'll kill you. Every person 
that was a part of the children of Israel. Every one of them died because they believed a lie. They died. And see, you and I don't know the importance of this thing of knowing truth, following truth, resisting the lies, resisting evil, resisting sin, and resisting sickness. Those things have no power over you. Face it. Fight it. Resist it. Say no to it. Because, hey, the only thing that's going to set you free is truth. Amen. Amen. So, at times in your life, there will be some evil that will attempt to attach itself to you and your thinking. And that lie will stay with you as long as you believe it. It's always opposed to God. The little lady with the kidney problems. Five years now she's been free. But before then, she listened to the physicians. And I'm not against physicians, I have a good one. But she was following their counsel. She was following their medication, which is made out of matter. It's material. And she's a spirit being. And they're listening. She's listening to that. And she's following. But then the truth began to come in. And she began to say, hey, you know, my body is going to go the direction that I tell it to go in. And I'm telling my body to get in line with my spirit, to get in line with the word of God. And God's word is medicine. It's health and healing to my body. I'm telling my body to get in line with it. And kidneys cleared up. Medication has been, on, been gone off it now for five years. Amen. Now, how do you do that? Just do what I'm telling you tonight. Quit following a lie. Whose report are you going to believe? God has a report. His report is always truth. Always. And his report is always good. The enemy always has a report. It's a lie. It's evil. There's no truth in it. Are you okay? Real good. Okay, what are you, you going to do when conflict comes? I want you to make a note of a few things here real quick. When you have a conflict. First thing you need to do is turn away from what I call natural thinking, human senses, turn away from it. Jesus talked about get in the closet. What are you going to do? You've you got a conflict here because you've got a different report. you get got an evil report. Doesn't look good. What do you do? I'm telling you what to do. Turn away from this. Turn away from carnal thinking Turn away from natural thinking. Find your closet. Find you somewhere that you can get along with God. Number two, acknowledge God's presence. <clears throat> Paul said in 1 Corinthians 14, 25, he said, God is in you. Paul said, Christ in you. Paul said, God's own nature is inside of you. There's a divine influence inside of you. It's called the Christ. Acknowledge that God's presence is with you. Now I'm telling you, God has your answer here. You're in conflict with something. You're wrestling with something. And you're trying to decide the direction to go. Am I going to go the natural or am I going to go the spiritual? Am I going to go with the word of the Lord? Or am I going to go with this evil report? And if it's a report that doesn't line up with the word of God, it's evil. I don't care where it comes from. Anything that doesn't line up with God's word is evil. 
God called it evil. That means it's a lie. So acknowledge God's presence. Number three, ask God, what do I need to know? What do I need to understand? What do I need to do? Ask God. Ask God. You've acknowledged his presence. Ask him, what do I need to know? Because you know what? The truth is going to set you free. What do I need to know? God is always going to lead you in the path of righteousness. God's always going to tell you truth. What God's going to tell you, it's always good. It's never evil. So just ask him, God, what do I need to know? What do I need to understand? What do I need to do? Number four, get quiet and listen. Get quiet and listen. Scripture says, be still and know that I'm God. Isaiah said, in quietness and confidence shall be your strength. Isaiah said, the whole earth is at rest. And it's quiet. When evil reports are working in your consciousness, there's a lot of clatter going on. Probably the hardest thing that you'll do as a follower of Jesus Christ is to get quiet. I first came to Shelby. It was hard to get Pentecostals to stand still long enough to lay hands on them. And something harder than that was tell them, shut up, let me do the pray. <laughs> you think it's easy to get quiet? I dare you to try. Just get quiet, be still, and know that I'm God. You see, because we think we've got to be doing something, much activity. Got to be doing something. Just get quiet. You've turned away from the natural. You begin to acknowledge the presence of God is with you right now. You're becoming God conscious, spirit conscious. You're getting spiritual minded at this moment. You're acknowledging God's presence. And you're asking him, what do I need to do? What do I need to understand? What do you want to show me? What do I need to know? And uh, just get quiet and listen. Well, you say, God doesn't talk to me. That's a lie. That's evil. That's an evil report you just gave right there. That's an evil report because it doesn't line up with the word. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. They hear my voice and they follow me. That's the word of the Lord. Anything other than that, because you have those thoughts, well, you know, God doesn't talk to me. Watch, that's an evil report. Don't, get in, don't come in agreement with that. Don't start following that lie. People have followed that all their life. By saying, God doesn't talk to me like that. That's a lie. You've been following it for how long? And that lie will stay alive as long as you follow it. And there's times you need to stop it. I agree with the word of God. God talks to me. I hear his voice. I know his voice. I won't follow the voice of a stranger. I follow him. That's the word of the Lord. Amen. That's truth. That's a good report. Anything that runs contrary to that is a lie. It's error. It's false. It's evil. Amen. And when God calls something evil, that means it's a booger. You don't want to touch it. And for God's sakes, do not allow it to settle in your consciousness. That's why Paul said, bless God, none of these things move me. He said, I just think myself happy. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> I have one other thing I'm going to tell you. First of all, I said, turn away from the natural. Acknowledge God's presence. Ask God what I need to do, what I need to know, what I need to understand. Get quiet and listen. Last, obey. 
Do what he tells you to do. Several days ago, when I was praying about this type of understanding to give you, I heard the Lord say something to me. I'd never heard it before. He said, I want my people to be healed of the reluctance to study. I said, Boy, how do you get somebody healed who are reluctant to study? I can't do that, but God can. Some of you need, now listen to me very carefully. You need your own Bible. Your own. Throw the phone away. Get your Bible. That's got white pages and black ink. Meditate it. Touch it. Quote it. Underline it. Highlight it. Listen to it. I'm telling you right now, you need to start training your mind to be renewed and become spiritual minded. That's the only thing that will get rid of carnal thinking is the word of the Lord. Amen. This book does not hold a place in a believer's life that it did 20, 30, 40 years ago when I came into the ministry. The first thing I did when I got saved, I bought a Bible. This is what I pick up of a morning before I pick up the Shelby Daily Star. This is what I pick up before I pick up my coffee. This is the last thing I will close tonight before I close my eyes. It's the word of the Lord. It is health to my flesh. It's life to me. It's medicine to me. I wouldn't make it without it. It's the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? amen. I'm praying tonight that God is going to move upon you. And before this week is out, you're going to have your own Bible. And if you want to, bless God, have your name put on the front of it right there. And if you can't afford to buy one, if you'll see me, I'll help you get one. Your Bible. Now, the biggest man on the block Come on, Father. The biggest dad on the block will walk out of his house Sunday morning with the Bible under his arm and his children behind him, going to the house of the Lord. Going to the house of the Lord. We didn't send our children. We brought our children to church. But before the children, there was the word of the Lord under my arm as we walked out of the house. My children have seen me with a Bible all my life. Well, you say, ha, ha. Yeah, I said, hallelujah. That's what I say, ha, ha, hallelujah. I'm telling you, get over this thing of being so busy that you don't have time to open up the word of the Lord and find out the truth of God and what God has said about you, what he said about your body, what he said about your health, what he said about all things that pertain to your life. Get in the word. Can you say amen? Learn these truths. And when you learn them, bless God, declare them. Can you say amen? amen. I said every morning, <clears throat> and I watched the sun come up over Whitaker Mountain. What a sight. And I have a little desk, an old antique desk I bought. It sits in front of my double window there in my bedroom. And I'm sitting there every morning. Now watch the sun come up. What an awesome sight. Now, do you know what happens when the sun comes up? What it? Darkness goes away, Mike. Did you hear what he said? Darkness goes away. Do you know what happened when I opened this book? Darkness goes away. When light arises, darkness goes away. Aren't you tired of stumbling around in darkness? And you don't even know where the light switch is? 
This Bible will bring light to you. And when the light comes, darkness goes. Well, am I going to become spiritual minded overnight? No, but I'll tell you what. If we ta- if the Lord tarries, and we'll be sitting around this time next year, you'll be a heck of a lot more spiritual minded than you are tonight. And a lot of things you think you know, you really don't. You're going to find out it might be a lie that some man told you. But see, this book right here is straightening your thinking up. Can you see, man? Okay. I'm quitting, but there are five things. I'm going to give you five words. I call them five tormentors. These five things, either one of them will keep you from becoming spiritual minded. Either one of them will keep you from becoming spiritual minded. If these are in your life, you're not only tormented, you're carnal minded, and you'll never be spiritual minded until you get free of them. First, fear. 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 Second is hatred. I'm amazed at what I've heard about what happened in Pensacola, I mean in Orlando. If your religion causes you to hate somebody, you need to get a new religion. You have hate in your life, you'll never be spiritual minded. Never. Until you get rid of that. If you have fear in your life, God's not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and love and of a sound mind. You see, fear is a spirit. It's an evil thing. That's the reason those spies, they got fearful because they saw they thought were giants. But there are no giants bigger than our God. Number three is resentment. This is a biggie. I need a sermon to deal with each one of these. Resentment. But I think you're mature enough to grab it and deal with it. Resentment. Don't you ever resent anybody. Number four, bitterness. This is the biggie. Bitterness. Bitterness. Forgiveness. 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 I have five. God just gave me another one. Jealousy. Jealousy. Now you have six. Hey, can I hear seven? (laughs) Those things. Those things. According to what the Spirit of the Lord told me three hours ago, those things will always keep you from becoming spiritual minded. I don't care who your pastor is. I don't care how many tapes you're listening to a day. I don't care what kind of music you're listening to. I don't care what kind of friends you run with. I'm telling you this. These are evil things that work in, the, in your subconsciousness or in your conscious thinking, these things work in you, and as long as they're there, you will never, ever become spiritual-minded. You'll be a carnal believer all the days of your life, washed to and fro, wandering around in darkness, waiting on the sun to come up. Amen! Please stand with me. Let's pray a moment. Lord, you told me that you wanted to heal people because they were just reluctant to study. Something is there preventing them from learning truth and from declaring the truth and to live these truths and to prove them to be true. In Jesus' name, I call for the sun to arise in their lives right now. I rebuke and I bind fear, hatred, 
resentment, bitterness, forgiveness, jealousy. By the authority of Jesus Christ, in Jesus' name, I release these people to the truth of God. I release upon them a hunger for the word of the Lord. And no longer will they be natural-minded, carnal-minded, but they'll be spiritual-minded. I decree this, and I declare it in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.